Welcome back to Calculus. Today in this video we're going to look at section 3.5, derivatives and trig functions. So we're just going to start out by giving you the derivatives and then we're going to start working with them and exploring them a little bit. So here they are. All six of these are also in your book, but hey, here you go. The derivative of sine is equal to cosine. The derivative of cosine is equal to negative sine. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. The derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. And the derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x. Now, I do want to point out one more thing here. If you have something like, say, that secant squared x that we had up here for the, for the tangent derivative, sometimes people get a little bit confused out of what exactly that exponent there is doing. Just remember that it's just another way of writing the secant of x raised to the second power. Okay, so this is just the standard form to write that expression. So all it is is you would find the secant of whatever your x value was, and then you would square that answer. Um, and that's going to be really important a little bit later on and when we get into the chain rule in section 6. So let's go ahead and start using some of these. The first thing that I want to do is I want to show that for numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6, you can actually come up with, the, with what the derivative is just by using these first two derivatives and then all the rules that we had for derivatives back in section I want to say three. So we're going to actually derive the secant, the derivative of secant, and that'll be the next thing we do. So hang on. Okay, so I want to show that the derivative of secant really is secant times tangent. So I have it over here, and it's really not too bad. Uh, we're going to use the quotient rule. Um, so we start by saying, okay, we know that secant is really the same as one over cosine. And that's how this whole thing's going to work out. We switch it to 1 over cosine because we know the derivative of cosine and we have a quotient rule. So I'm going to call the 1 on top u, which means du is 0. The cosine on the bottom is v, which makes dv negative sine x. And we're off and running. So I fill in the pieces into my quotient rule. The bottom piece, v cosine x times the derivative of the top, which is 0, minus 1 or sorry, minus the top piece times the derivative of the bottom. So being a little bit careful here, that means that the cosine x times zero, that drops out, and a minus one times negative sine gives us a positive sine. Oh, and it's all over cosine squared. So here we are, we're basically done. It's just it's gonna take a little bit of rearranging to get it into the form that the derivative takes. So we have sine x over cosine squared x. So I, what I did is I broke up that cosine squared because I, I know I want a tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. So I broke it up into sine over cosine times one over cosine. Notice those are the same thing, right? If we multiply these fractions, the cosines go back together just fine. And sure enough, sine over cosine is tangent, one over cosine is secant. So I got tangent x, secant x, but that's exactly the same thing as secant x times tangent x because multiplication is commutative. So there you go. That's we just derived the derivative for secant. That was fun and exciting. And now we're going to just go ahead and do some examples of derivatives using trig. And some of them will be pretty nice. Some of them are going to be wonderful messes. So you have that to look forward to. So I'm going to do three more examples for you and we'll go from there. Okay, so here is example one. It's not too terribly huge or obnoxious. Um, but I didn't have room on here for any more examples. So here's your first example. y is equal to 2 e to the x minus 3 sine x. So we have a lovely little, little function. A couple of things to notice here first. We have subtraction in the middle, and that's wonderful because it's going to allow us to take these two derivatives separately. Remember, addition and subtraction are basically always going to split up your derivative. And actually, they really will always split up your derivative, making your life much easier. So what I'm really doing here to find this derivative, I need the derivative of 2e to the x, and then minus the derivative of 3 sine x. And that works out really nice. These are both pretty nice. Um, remember, constants in front just kind of stay in front. So the derivative of e to the x is, is itself. So we just get that 2 again, 2e to the x minus. Here, the derivative of, I can talk. The derivative of sine is cosine. 
So I keep the three, right? I could think of the three as being out front if you want. Derivative of sine is cosine, so we get minus three cosine x. There we go, that's the derivative. Let's do another one. The next one will definitely be messier. So here we go. All right, so here's my next example. We'll do this one and then we have one more. As you can see, this one took up a little bit more space. So lots of fun. My function or my equation y is equal to x squared e to the x cosine x. This time, no addition or subtraction. This is one big product rule. First thing we need to notice is that it really has three parts. We have the x squared, we have the e to the x, and we have the cosine of x. Three different parts, so we have this kind of souped up product rule that we have to work with. So I'm, I identified them as u, v, and w, and then I took their derivatives. This is a really good idea. The bigger and messier these products get, the easier it's going to be if you, if you identify the pieces and their derivatives first, because then you just have to piece together the, the parts. So for x squared, its derivative is 2x, right? Drop that exponent down, subtract one from the exponent. The derivative for b is just e to the x because it is its own derivative. And last but not least, the derivative of cosine is a negative sign. Be careful with that negative sign. Please don't lose it. Um, all right, so here we go. Let's piece it all together. Y prime. Remember, when we have more than two things multiplied, we just want to take one der use one derivative. I'm really struggling today talking. We want to use one derivative at a time multiplied by the other two pieces. So I have uv derivative of w, uw, derivative of v, and vw, derivative of u, all three, all separated by addition. And so you can see I worked this through. It's loads of fun. Be really careful. These get messy very, very fast. So I just first went through and just filled in the pieces just exactly like, it, like they looked. So u, v, derivative of w. u, w, times the derivative of v, and vw times the derivative of u. Now, when we clean this up, a couple of things to look out for. This is not subtract sine x, so please, you know, when I put it in here, I use parentheses because I want to keep that multiplication. All I did was I dragged the negative sign out front because it looks nicer that way. So we have negative x squared e to the x times the sine of x. For the second piece, I like to have these trig functions at the end. I really think it's just a little bit nicer that way. So since it's all multiplication, I just rearranged it a little bit and brought the e to the x out in front. So we have x squared e to the x cosine x. And finally, I brought the same thing here. I brought the 2x out front. So we have plus 2x e to the x cosine x. And as you can see, I couldn't fit it all in one line on the board. So, hey, that happens. All right, we have one more example, and then we'll be done with this section. Okay, last example. y is equal to the sine of x over 1 minus the cosine of x. The derivative itself here is not too terribly horrible. Cleaning it up is really where the fun happens on this one. So again, I have a quotient rule here. On the last example, we had a product rule. And I'm going to take advantage of figuring out these pieces to help when I actually start putting together the derivative. So the top is u, so there's my sine x, its derivative is cosine x. The bottom is 1 minus cosine x, its derivative, is, the 1 goes away, right? The derivative of 1 is 0. And be really careful, the derivative of negative cosine is going to be a positive sign. Remember, the derivative of cosine by itself is, is negative sign, and so with this extra negative sign in front of it, too many signs. Um, with extra negative in front of it, it's just going to switch and make it, the derivative here a positive sign. All right, so I pieced it all together. The bottom piece, v times the derivative of the top, the cosine x, minus the top sine times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So there we go, there's the mess. So I started by expanding the parentheses. So I get cosine x minus cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And, you know, when I got here, I saw the cosine squared and the sine squared, and I know that cosine, plus, cosine squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1. And so I don't quite have that. These are both, both have minus signs. 
So you'll notice I factored out the minus sign first. So I have cosine x minus cosine squared plus sine squared, which I was able to turn into 1. So I get cosine x minus 1 all over 1 minus cosine x squared. And here, the top and the bottom look really similar, right? They both have 1 and a cosine x. They both have a minus sign. Unfortunately, the signs are backwards, right? The top has a positive cosine and the bottom has a negative and vice versa with the ones. So what I did is I factored out a negative one on the top so that I could actually make them match. So if I factor out that negative one, the one becomes positive, the cosine becomes negative, and now they match, which means I can get rid of one of them, get rid of the one on the top with one of them on the bottom, leaving me with a derivative of negative one over one minus cosine x, which I think looks a lot nicer than, you know, way back, say here, where, where we originally had the derivative. So if you can clean these up, you wanna do that. One big reason why, if for some reason we needed a second derivative on this problem, you do not want to take the second derivative of this disaster, because it would be one big, ugly, messy quotient rule um, with lots of other pieces involved. Um, whereas with this one down here, this is still a quotient rule, but it's a much simpler, smaller looking quotient rule to work with. So there you go. That's section 3.5. Have a wonderful day.